here we go. Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros, and we are back for some all-new Walking Dead. Yes, it is that time of year. Our Sunday ritual has returned, and uh, we're, we're back to review episode number one of season eight entitled Mercy. And I thought that they did a fantastic job this week. There was is a very solid start to the season. And uh, if we can heed producer, executive producer Scott M. Gimple's word, we're gonna need a seatbelt for our couches or our chairs or whatever we sit in to binge watch our Walking Dead every Sunday night. So Hopefully, we can take that at its word and on its own merit and get to really enjoy this season. So, to start, I thought that there was some very awesome callbacks since this is a momentous occasion for the show. It is its 100th episode. They got to do a couple of little things that uh, really called back to the first episode of the series, which, you know, the very beginning of the episode where you get to see Carl pull up and and look under the car and at the gas station and we get, obviously we see Rick with the little girl. Uh, by the way, uh, spoilers, <laughs> just as a warning, if you haven't seen my TV reviews, basically we're recapping and reviewing and obviously spoiling the show. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it and then come back here and uh, take a look at this and discuss the episode with me. So, uh, the also, they had uh, a little overhead shot of Carol looking at a flower that was drawn on top of a car from the overpass, and uh, I thought that was really cool, you know, Carol looking at the flowers. Just some little callbacks like that. If you want to take a look at a lot more Easter eggs, you can go to IMDb. They've got a lot of trivia on there, a lot of Easter eggs on there, and, uh, you know, you can also check AMC.com. They've got a lot of things listed under the, the Walking Dead page as well. If you, uh, if you missed some, I won't sit here and point them all out, but uh, you can definitely check out those websites if you want to kind of get a better idea of what happened during the episode for Easter eggs. Overall, I thought that the theme of the episode was pretty fun, pretty uplifting, considering the entire previous season was Rick under Negan's boot heel and just not the character we have come to know. And now I feel like he's almost an even better version of the character. The way that they used Rick to inspire people and just the coming together of the Hilltop, the Kingdom, and Alexandria was very, very well done. He gave some great speeches. Andy Lincoln was awesome in this episode. Some absolutely great writing, some great speeches. I think my favorite and most profound bits of the episode were two things said by Rick and one thing said by Jesus. When Rick is explaining everything to everybody and, and telling Maggie how proud of her that, that she is right before they kind of launched their assault on Negan's forces, I think that he explaining this to her and her saying that I learned everything about leading from you. And when he puts his hand on her shoulder and says, well, good, I'm glad to hear that. Because when this is over, I'm going to be following you. I just thought that that was really profound as to how strong Maggie's character is and, and how much Rick has come out the other side from the Rick we saw in just one year ago in episode one. Completely shattered. They are both so good on the show and I think that you couldn't have asked for more out of that scene. It was emotional and it was pretty profound. Another Maggie uplifting scene is when the, everybody shows up in front of the sanctuary and calls Negan out and he basically comes out and is still doing his Negan thing, being as entertaining as ever and pulls Gregory out because of course that's where he went as Jesus said. Basically Negan makes the play that all the hilltop people can go back or else their homes will be gone, and Jesus says, we stand with Maggie, and nobody from the hilltop leaves. This is slightly different from the comics, where, you know, there was a handful that left. That was a very, very profound scene, showing how much Maggie has galvanized her community, and it's about the people, and not where they live, and it's about building a better world for Maggie's child and any future children, as Ezekiel said. There's just so much there. 
I, and I, th- I do believe that the, the words uttered by Rick by the end of the episode, my mercy prevails over my wrath, which is where the title of the episode came from, Mercy. I think it's where you see how he's come full circle. He doesn't even want to kill all the saviors. He'll do what he has to do, but things have changed a little in his mindset, and they've changed a little in how he's going to go about things. Everything that this episode is pointing towards was pointing towards the future, whereas maybe last season it was all looking at the past and how everything that they had come to know in the past and failing to realize where they were heading in the future maybe is what contributed to their demise last season. This time, everything is uplifting and pointing towards the future, such as Carl and Michonne's conversation that was pulled out of the comic between he and Andrea that she's going to help him defend this place, and he's like, whatever. And she's like, trust me, that's where we're going. It's your show now. That stuff I loved as moments coming out of the comic, and I just loved it. It's nice to see the planning that went into this siege. It wasn't some half-assed assault on one compound. No, this was a fully coordinated, fully planned out attack. And I will get into a couple of small nitpicks by the end. But overall, I just felt that this was such a good way to enter the season. And it definitely had some great moments. Father Gabriel saving Rick from forcing himself to kill Negan, even though he had an opportunity, just because Rick's more important than to them alive than it is for Negan to be dead and Rick not be here because he's going through hell to try and kill him. Gregory, man, what a dick move. Oh, it's so, so funny though. I mean, it was perfectly in keeping with his character and Father Gabriel's 180 has been awesome. One of the more entertaining and fun characters. Definitely enjoyed uh, the Negan shit and pants for Father Gabriel. Although I don't understand because Father Gabriel has an assault rifle and all Negan has is his baseball bat Lucille doesn't make a whole lot of sense so I guess with that we'll uh, we'll get into a couple nitpicks boy they wasted a lot of ammo to shoot up some windows didn't they <laughs> I thought that was a little bit implausible having the group all together definitely makes for a much better flow and my biggest criticism is even though maybe not that much really ended up happening in the episode it felt so much more whole and conclusive than any episode really happened last season. They kept splintering off and branching off and doing these own stories, and it just was really boring. This time, everything felt cohesive. And that that's because there was only a couple of things you were cutting from, and it was all in the same episode, and it just felt so much better to watch. The only other thing really was, you know, I, I Negan at this point has either won you over completely, or completely jump the shark. If you're sick of his antics, then there's no real character development. Complete opposite of Rick, where you see how much he's grown even eight seasons later, he has all this room for character development. Negan is Negan. So if you love him, you're gonna continue loving him. But if you wanna see something different from Negan, you're not gonna see him be any different. And for me, I don't care. I absolutely love Jeffrey Dean Morgan. He's freaking fantastic. He makes me laugh, even though he's such a bastard. But he's awesome. He really is. And I, I, I really enjoyed the first episode, uh, the pacing, the way that everything was set up. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was really, really well done. And it even had a, a good white knuckle ending, a good cliffhanger for the next episode where maybe... When Negan said, everything ain't going to turn out the way you think it is, Rick. Maybe he was right. Because we got a little bomb explosion from a grenade from one of the saviors got off. And uh, as our preview from next week shows, everybody's getting up and they're definitely dazed and confused. And there's a lot of walkers around. One big criticism everybody said was that not much was uh, accomplished with their siege of the sanctuary. Um, bullshit. That entire place was just surrounded by zombies. I think they accomplished something. Taking out the outposts, things like that. A lot more was done in this episode than you can say for pretty much any episode in the entirety of last season. 
you at least had some story progression and things happen and we had a good kickoff point and a good trajectory for the rest of the season and hopefully they can carry that on through all 16 episodes if it were me and this will probably end up being one of the videos i do is how to fix the walking dead and make it back to what it should be is reducing those episodes so that there's less filler but if they continue to do things like this awesome the only thing that really really didn't work for me was the flash forwards one where rick looked like the you know soggy sappy eyed guy the worn down beaten down one that was in the early part of last season and the old man rick stuff is a little strange the way they handled it but you know if you've if you've read the comics you'll kind of know what trajectory the show seems to be heading towards it's a little like i said odd the way that they handled the flash forward scenes so obviously there's some hardships that they do have to undertake and that's what you can tell from intimate from those two types of flash forwards but hopefully we'll have some really good surprises in store i'm hoping that maybe there will be some slight deviations from the comic and and uh we did get some confirmation from robert kirkman that the crossover could very well happen at some point in the back half of this season so 2018 should be seeing that crossover so we'll uh, we'll see exactly what happens and this is a very exciting time to be a walking dead fan it seems to have picked up steam again hopefully they can maintain it the first episode last year was a solid start as well and it didn't follow through on its promise so we'll see what happens guys if i was going to score the first episode of the walking dead this year i am going to give it a very very solid nine out of ten <laughs> guys i really enjoyed this episode only minor things really bugged me i know that it has its detractors already but i'm excited for this season i'm excited walking dead is back and i hope you guys are too let me know in the comments below what you thought of this week's episode of The Walking Dead. Of course, if you enjoyed this review, go ahead and hit that like button. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're going to be covering every single episode of the season. So if you want to take a look at things in depth with me, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. My name is Mike from the Super Wheeler Bros. And as always, my friends, have yourselves a super week.